not unusual to find seniors in the Sioux Falls School District committed to the academics and activities of high school. We wouldn't have this program if it were. What's more rare is finding a student who, by the time they graduate, is committed to leaving everything in high school better than they found it, including clubs, classes, the school community, and even their friends. In this episode of Senior Spotlight, we travel to Roosevelt High School, where a part of one senior's legacy will be her endless devotion to others. We are Roosevelt. We are one. It's more than just a clever saying on a t-shirt. Best Buddies is a friendship club at Roosevelt High School and it pairs students of all abilities. Um, we have meetings during ad room so kids get to see each other uh, during the day but then we also plan activities outside of the school day and it's just been such a wonderful way for um, some students that have some intellectual or maybe physical disabilities to be paired with a buddy that has just regular abilities and break down some of those inclusion barriers and it just it really speaks to the we are Roosevelt we are one and you know we just really appreciate all of the kids that are involved in it and the friendships that they form. It's not a forced friendship and that's one of the things that um, we let the kids know right away is that this isn't something that you have to do. Um, what ends up being is you know these kids build these bonds and they end up um, you know they go out for ice cream after a basketball game or they see each other they're in the hall and they you know purposely search each other out during the day to make sure that they can say hi to their buddy and you know genuinely build a friendship just like you would with any other friend that you have. The Best Buddies program is relatively new at Roosevelt, and Madeline Walsh was integral in getting it started. Last year when our Best Buddies chapter started, um, she was very important in getting that off the ground, and so I've worked with her in that capacity for two years. But her involvement in this way wasn't new even then. Another thing that we um, have embraced over the years, and this was even before Best Buddies, is we have made a connection with adults with disabilities in our community. It started out just volunteering at Miracle Field, and that grew to then volunteering in their apartments when the weather didn't allow us to play baseball anymore. And so on a Sunday afternoon, we're playing games, we're baking cookies. Uh, we're just, once again, building friendships with people that you know, a lot of these kids would probably never have a connection to. And Madeline has always been such a huge supporter of that. And then Best Buddies was just an easy a transition for her to bring that type of friendship to Roosevelt High School. Every other Sunday throughout the winter, we have an opportunity to go in groups to um, these apartments. And these disabled adults are there and we uh, play some games with them, help them with grocery shopping, set up their Christmas tree. I know last weekend we wrapped presents, just really whatever they've got going on, and just build a relationship with them over the years that we go. And then in the summer, we play baseball at Miracle Field with them. Her role in Best Buddies can't be overlooked when you learn about how the program has grown in just a year. Towards the end of my sophomore year in high school, my student council advisor, Mrs. Jensen, came to the council and said, I heard about this awesome program called Best Buddies. I'd really love to start it up at Roosevelt. Does anyone want to head that up with me? And fortunately, I said yes right away, and a few other students did as well. So we um, really just set up that chapter at Roosevelt. We had about 60 members last year, and I believe we're up to any I think about 120 members this year, so we've at least doubled our membership in just our first year of being a chapter, so it's really awesome. I know that I personally love to see the kids and Best Buddies. All the kids, our um, RISE students, our other students, just to build relationships with each other and to be able to say hi to someone in the hallway. I know we've had members who have come in really, really shy, but they get in these groups with these amazing people that we have at Roosevelt, and they just really come out of their shell throughout the year. They're more confident in all of their activities, and it's just really amazing to see happen. Building relationships at our school and in the community with people with disabilities, and four years serving on the student council, barely scratched the surface of Madeline's daily life. So right now, I'm in 
first period I have AP Calculus and then I go to Drawing 2 and then I've got AP Literature and Composition, AP Biology and then Medical Interventions at CTE this semester and then next semester I'll have AP Calculus, just Government, uh, AP Biology, AP Literature and then I'm taking the EMT course here at CTE. If you're keeping track at home, that's three advanced placement classes before lunch. Her afternoons are spent doing things like this. Today we were on day six of a long lab where we start off with the traditional uh, higher level AP biotype lab where we were working on bacterial transformation. So we were trying to take DNA from a jellyfish and put that DNA into a bacterial cell and then have the bacterial cell make the protein that would have been found in the jellyfish. And that protein is interesting because it glows. So they can keep track of this protein by looking for the glowing substance within their lab. So first we got the bacteria to grow and then we had to get more bacteria to grow. Then we had to isolate out this glowing protein um, and finally, we had to run that protein through a protein electrophoresis gel so that we can prove that it is the protein that we say it is. And we're going to do that by matching up its size. And so at day six of a lab, there's been lots of opportunities for things to go right and a few opportunities for things to go wrong. And we deal with all those along the way, but today was really neat for them to finally have the final ending of loading their gels. And tomorrow they'll get to see those stained results and see if they actually proved the existence of their protein. If that doesn't sound like anything you got to do in high school, you're not alone. And it's not lost on Madeline. In fact, her considerable experiences at Roosevelt and the Career and Technical Education Academy have significantly helped guide her future plans. We have a variety of students that take biomedical sciences at CTE. But they're all interested in science and have some sort of an inkling that they want to work in medicine. Students will have very wildly different end goals, such as research all the way to going to medical school or pharmacy or physical therapy, or some of them want to be nurses. So it could definitely be different, but it's all in the medical field. And the nice thing about the biomedical, sci biomedical science courses is that they get a little bit of information about a lot of topics so that it does help them do some exploratory investigation and give them a better idea about what they might want to do after they leave high school. I think I've always wanted to be a doctor. I've always loved science. I remember in elementary school I was in the gifted and talented program and we did all these science experiments and it was just fun. I've always been better at science and math than anything else and I just feel like as I've progressed and taken the classes that I have that the medical field is the right one for me. It was in human body systems, Mrs. Nelson's class, that we had a unit on the eyes and I really just fell in love with that unit and everything that had to do with that career. I got a job shadow set up for me for that and I just kind of decided that that's my goal, is an ophthalmologist. I was talking to my counselor, um, Sarah Campbell, on a trip to University of Nebraska-Lincoln, and she was kind of asking me about different careers that I might be interested in, and I had said, we just learned about ophthalmology in human body systems, and it sounded pretty cool, so I was thinking about looking into it, and she actually went ahead and set up a job shadow for me at Vance Thompson. So it was a really cool way to just kind of follow the doctor around a little bit and see what it was really like in a scenario like that. So I just really love Mrs. Nelson and I had Mrs. Tolk uh, for principles of biomedical science and they're just very adamant on making things fun for us here. We do a lot of lab work, it's a lot of real life scenarios and we do a lot of, um, we find all these careers and try and discuss what we're interested in, and it's just a lot more fun to be here than... I love Roosevelt, but it's really in-depth at CTE. This summer, when we asked students to tell us about teachers that mean a lot to them, to show to staff at the back-to-school session for all our employees, Madeline was one of the first featured. Ms. Nelson is always reading up on different events in medicine and getting involved in different clubs such as HOSA and really just helping us out to discover what we want to do 
in our future. Ms. Nelson is caring and dedicated and really just loves all of her students. She really liked to hear and share about a little more and just do more than what was necessary for those lessons, so it was really cool. I think Ms. Nelson's class is really fun. She works really hard to get us these fun activities. We get to do a lot of dissections and just a lot of what we're interested in. We got to go to a couple of colleges and really feel those out and see what we like with Miss Nelson and that was really awesome of her to do. So We actually had a unit on eyes in human body systems and I took interest in one of the careers that we learned about and she really talked through that with me and just helped me kind of decide what I want to do in the future. She definitely affected my future plans and I know for a fact that she's affected the future plans of many others. It's safe to say the feeling is mutual. When I first met Madeline, she instantly, I instantly could tell that she had a service heart. She wanted to give to others, and I think that's where some of her interest comes for working in medicine, along with a natural interest in science. And so I think she's open-minded to what her career path might look like, but she's really strongly considering attending medical school after graduation. She is one of the most rewarding students that I've ever worked with because it's not often that you come across a high school student that is academically ambitious but has such an innate need to give to others. She wants to give more than she receives and she will work hard academically but she'll also pour her heart out for all the others that surround her which is such a wonderful place to be just in her world being able to live with that positive energy and her wonderful role model example. A person like that brings a lot to a classroom. Her positive attitude helps build a real safety net. For kids that are high achievers, sometimes the risk of making a mistake can be really terrifying. But when somebody like Madeline is your lab partner, you know that she is going to be positive and not be upset if something goes wrong, and she's going to compliment you on all the things that you did wonderfully, and that uh, she's just going to pull her own weight and, and be a very on-the-ball, prepared, positive lab partner. That's one of the most um, critical pieces of growing older and getting into more difficult content is being okay with an outcome not being 100% perfect. And especially in the lab world, or especially in medicine, there's not always a clear-cut answer and there's not always a one right final product of a lab. And so having that good attitude is really helpful. And to a student council, She's a quiet presence that she does a lot of the behind the scenes work to make sure that when we get in front of everyone and have to have everything organized, she's, she's just there. And um, she is the epitome of what the best buddy is. And I, I know like this year at our Halloween party that we had out at the Unify Center, her and her buddy were out on the dance floor just having a great time. And you know, she, she is such a great role model and she is an example of, you know, what everybody should aspire to in building that genuine friendship. She's, she's been great. And to a school community. We're like a puzzle and each of us has to play a certain role and she's just an inspiration to others um, and encouraging them. You know, sometimes it's hard for everybody to make all their pieces fit together and get everything that they need to get done with school and work and jobs and friends and everything and she she just is encouraging and if she sees somebody falling behind she's going to step in and say hey what can i do to help you madeline is an extremely hard worker and she challenges herself to always continue to do more and try more and so obviously enrolled in ap and accelerated and and those classes that she knows are going to push her to do her best, but also she's thinking about, you know, her future and, and how are these classes going to help her um, in, in what she wants to do in the future. And of course, I see her um, having a career where she's helping people because that's what she does. But yet Madeline is one of the first people to show up at a volleyball game and be in the front row and cheer for her teammates. And, you know, she's just there to support people. She herself maybe wasn't involved in a lot of um, sporting type extracurricular activities, but she's that voice in the stands that's cheering them on to a victory. Madeline has taken that supportive mentality and transferred it to academics too, where it's just as important. 
it's been so valuable for me to just have the opportunities that I've had at Roosevelt and at CTE and have the teachers that I've had and especially the friends that I've made through those classes that really push me to just do better in everything I do. I know that I have friends going to Stanford, I have friends going to West Point. They're all there to build me up as a person, make sure that I'm on the right track. We edit each other's essays for fun and we talk about politics and that's along with other typical high school experiences. But just through these classes, I've met the coolest people and just had the coolest experiences. Really just trying to diversify myself and just, it's been really amazing. In middle school, we were all on the all accelerated track together. So I've really been in classes with some of these people for seven years straight and I love it. We have a group chat that we made in seventh grade that we still use. My friend texted us in it the other day to let us know she got into Stanford and we send out, oh, did you make sure to register to vote? Did you hear that ACT scores are out? So it's more of the building each other up academically with some of those friends, but also just getting close to different people every year within that group and also adding people to that group is really been a good experience. Thanks to her years at JFK Elementary, Memorial Middle School, Roosevelt High School, and the CTE Academy, Madeline feels she's ready for the next step. I really feel like I'm very prepared for college just because of the class load that I have now and dealing with stress and knowing what to do when I need to do it. The responsibility part is definitely there. And her teachers agree, whatever college she chooses, wins. Wherever she ends up going to college is going to be so blessed to have her in their community because she will instinctively find ways to serve others, whether it's in her dorm room or people that have the same major as her. She's going to find a way to give back to that community and find people in need and just pour out from her heart and help everybody around her. And that's really important in a college community too, where maybe there aren't as many adults around kids all the time, somebody like Madeline will be a wonderful resource to her roommate and her dorm mates and all of her classmates. She's just one of those people like you feel better about yourself when you've spent time with Madeline Walsh because she just brings this feeling of you're important and what you do is important and, and she lets people know that and makes them feel that way. Her impact is so significant it doesn't seem possible. When Nelson is writing letters of recommendation. I want to write at the beginning, this is going to seem fake, <laughs> but it's real. It's, it's unbelievably real. I do see kids that are very ambitious and definitely take steps to determine what they want to do after high school. I think it's safe to say I have never had a student that has been as actively involved as Madeline. And I think that she gets a lot of that from learning to be busy through activities like Roosevelt Student Council. You learn how I have to be here and here and here at these times. I have all this homework to do, so I need to find a way to manage my time. And she finds those open slots, and she finds a way that she can learn and better herself, and she fills them all in and makes just a remarkable week schedule, but it really lends to a a great outcome. Student Council at Roosevelt High School is more than just dances and pep rallies, which sometimes you know people think that's all we're going to do. Um, we really have a focus on serving our school, um, the entire population, not just you know going to a basketball game or something like that. For example, last week with our RHS Cares, you know we were we were thinking beyond. We have a student that has a connection to an Ethiopian orphanage, and so we were able to supply 30 orphans with clothes and toys and supplies that they need. We're also sending backpacks for the school-age kids there. But yet we're also filling needs right here. Um, we, we jammed the cupboards of our food pantry full of snacks that um, our social worker sends with kids daily for the kids and for their families. Um, one of our new ones that we tried this year is a RHS Spirit Wear Drive. And so next week on Monday, Kids at Roosevelt are going to get to walk into the spirit store and go home with some really nice sweatshirts and sweatpants and just all of the stuff that, you know, they can be proud to be a rider and they've got the spirit wear to show it. Um, so serving our school, serving our community. While managing all of this is not without its challenges. It gets to be difficult. I just try to stay positive through it. It's 
I spend a lot of time at Starbucks doing homework with my friends, just studying together, making it kind of a more social situation is what really helps me through it. I know that when I'm out of school, I'll go to my clubs with my friends, we'll do homework for an hour or two, if there's a volleyball game, a basketball game, we'll go. Is it in Brookings? Okay, we'll carpool and we'll go to Brookings and we'll support that. And then we'll go home. If I've got a little bit more homework left, I do it quick. I go to bed, wake up for activities the next day, and I just keep going with those same friends and by my side and my parents there to support me through it. Definitely my mom and dad have always pushed me to just do as much as I can to do more. And I'm so grateful to have parents that care about my grades, care that I'm doing my best at all times, care to say, hey, I know you've got a lot going on today. It's okay, we're here for you. We'll try and help you figure some other stuff out so that you can focus on school today, make sure you can get to your clubs after school and do your homework and get to the basketball game. Just do all of it. And I couldn't do it without my parents. You'd never know it by how she represents herself, her schools, her community, and her state. HOSA is a club for future health professionals. And in HOSA, you get a chance to either prepare a work product, like maybe it's a written paper or a speech, or you can prepare a skill. And at the state conference then, you meet up with all the other HOSA kids from South Dakota and you compete in your event. It's kind of like the state track meet. So instead of the long jump, Madeline competed in CPR and first aid. And her second event was researched persuasive speaking, where she wrote a paper and then had to present that paper to a group of judges. She really enjoyed the CPR first aid portion. She had a partner for that and they had to go in and work as a team. They did a great job preparing. They stayed after school and practiced on the mannequins and ran through scenarios so that when they walked in the door, the judges presented them with a situation, two patients that needed care. They had to provide the first aid to one patient and the CPR to the other patient. And they actually did well enough that they qualified to go to nationals. So Madeline and a group of other CTE HOSA students traveled to Dallas, Texas and competed at the National HOSA Conference. And also at these conferences, there's lots of opportunities to attend educational sessions and learn from people as they give speeches to a large group, you know, experts in their field. So she took in all of that and just like you would expect, she thought it was fabulous. And she has a great attitude about everything. So I, I really do believe that that she's the kind of kid that could make a trip like that fabulous for all the other kids that go with her. And she goes to Sanford Hospital and participates in something called Sanford Health Youth Medical Explorers. And they meet once or twice a month where they feature one particular unit of the hospital. And they talk about patient care and skills that are used and what type of people work in that area. So she's getting a chance to learn what medical professionals do right here in her community. And that will help drive her uh, decisions as she leaves high school. And as that time approaches, it's bittersweet for those that know her. I run into students, former students all the time, and if I happen to ha be in a medical facility and she walks in as a doctor or a nurse, I will breathe a sigh of relief because I know that I will be in the best care possible because she is just such a great person and um, I don't know, I don't think I could say enough good things about Madeline Walsh. She's, she's been a joy to to be around for the last four years and we're certainly going to miss her at Roosevelt High School when she moves on.